This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe video. Today I'll be sharing to you my immortal farming build for Necros. In the past I have been divided between Necros and Korra on who is the best farming Warframe in the game. There's Necros that gives you extra loot in a wide area. His desecrate ability is also mobile which makes him better compared to Korra's pilfering strangle dome. The only downside with Necros is his survivability. Don't get me wrong, I know that Shield of Shadows exists that grants a cap of 90% damage reduction while it's active. However, this ability is sometimes the reason why I die as Necros. It has a relatively slow casting that makes you vulnerable to being damaged by enemies while in the process of activating your ultimate ability. In addition, I feel like I need to sacrifice a lot of best in slot mod to get 214% power strength in my build so I can have the 90% damage reduction. I say this because aside from power strength requirements, I feel limited in one area since you will need to be at least 50 meters from your shadow to always get the 90% damage reduction. 50 meters is great in paper, but this is really annoying in real mission, especially if your team wants to move around most of the time. Most probably, you will be recasting your Shield of Shadow over and over again just to keep up with a very mobile team. Also, take note that Shield of Shadow does consume corpses and sometimes it also consumes those corpses intended for the Desecrate ability, which is not good, especially if you are super meticulous when it comes to getting the highest possible loot in every mission. And lastly, damage reduction won't be that great in Steel Path and Beyond levels. Shield of Shadow was very exclusive before for Kuva Survival Farm as it will make Necros tanky and can do long Kuva survival. However, this doesn't mean that he has no problem as aside from the clunky mechanic of the ability, 90% damage reduction is a waste when enemies are hitting you so hard to the point that it can one-shot you with your current Umbral health. The best way for a Shield of Shadow farming Necros to survive is to pair it with Gloom that grants you life steal and slow, which is kind of perfect for a damage reduction setup. The only downside though is you need to invest for Blue Archon Shard to give your build decent amount of energy so you can put all the necessary mods in your Necros build. But in the end, Necros is still very limited as you can't put all the necessary mods needed to make Shield of Shadow achieve its peak performance. Honestly, I tried my best to keep the Shield of Shadow gameplay, but I really don't like it, especially in team composition wherein you need to be in places where your team goes. It's annoying to keep the 90% damage reduction as you will stay within 50 meters or 72 meters if you have the stretch mod. But when you have range mod, then you either sacrifice adaptation or prime continuity in your build. It's a headache. That is why sometimes I just go with the gloom adaptation build for necros paired with either a nuking weapon or my favorite incarnate torrid but still the survivability problem persists especially when i'm dealing with special units like thrax and eximus units these eximus units that as overguard will be a pain in the ass to deal with as they have a small window to cast some random bullshit that will cripple your necros easily in conclusion shield of shadow is really a waste of time and investment for me as i can't even keep my necros alive at the five minute mark in the steel path conjunction survival when those thrax units spawn that is the biggest weakness of Necros, but I'm glad that after Whispers in the Walls, finally, this Warframe can now survive even the toughest hit from bosses such as Steel Path, Fragmented Suzerain. Now, Necros is not really a great Warframe when it comes to farming Operation Gargoyles Cry, but I am showing you how crazy this survivability setup for Necros that you can even make the Warframe immortal. The best part about this is that you don't need to babysit your shadows, and it's not mandatory to subsume gloom in your build just to add more survivability to the Warframe. This means means that you can add any helmet that you want after replacing his first ability. The trick I use here is the new Topaz Archon Shard that grants you shield regeneration when you have damaged enemies with blast status. The blast status can be abused using a sentinel with the verglass weapon. The key here is to have multiple blast procs on enemies, and you can do this with the verglass sentinel weapon that rapidly proc 10 stacks of blast to an enemy. The good thing is that this pair with the duplex bond mod and every time the clone will proc blast proc, it will also trigger the effect of the Topaz Archon Shard. Also, so, Duplex Bond is a must-have for this since it allows you to always proc the blast status even if your Sentinel is down. The good thing is, when using a Sentinel with Necros, the recovery time of your Sentinel can be lowered using the Restorative Bond mod that pairs well with Necros Desecrate ability that gives you insane amount of health orb drops. Aside from that, I also have Prime Region to lower the cooldown and then Momentous Bond that will also lower the recovery time after you kill an Eximus unit. For the Sentinel, you can pick any Sentinel that you want, but I like the Duriga Sentinel since it can also proc the blast status to 7 enemies using its 
arc coil mod precept. There are other options like the Jin with its reawaken precept that gives you also recovery time, but I still prefer Dariga and I don't have any issue when it comes to my Sentinel's recovery time due to the insane amount of health orbs I can give with my Necros. The downside though is you can't be considered the ultimate farming Necros as you don't get to use the Smita Cavett's Blessing, which sometimes grants additional loot as you will be using your companion slot for survivability. Also, this only works in Star Chart missions and not within Duviri Paradox mission as we all know that Sentinel aren't allowed in the game mode. But anyway, most of the missions that you would want to play Necros is within the Star Chart mission, farming for those resources to craft your items or use them in the Helmet system. Another advantage about this build is you can use this also in mini boss fights. You can use this in Zeraman bounty missions or even in the Sanctum Anatomica bounty missions to farm resources while farming for standings. You can also use this against corn bots and isolation vaults to get more corn bot parts with the help of the Desecrate ability. With the help of the insane survivability provided by shield and the shield gating mechanic, you can just focus on farming the resources you want while playing with your necros. Right now, I'm using a combination of Incarnate Torrid with the Amalgam Ripcast True Steel that grants gore. The gore keyword appears to describe the dismemberment mechanic, and this synergizes well with Necros's Desecrate, as bisected body parts are treated as distinct corpses and have their own chance to yield additional loot. Even with a corrosive build in my Incarnate Prisma Torrid, and I can still gain possible extra loot from those enemies that are affected by Desecrate, this is the most unconventional way to farm with Necros, as it's not the meta slash melee build that most people use, but it works effectively in farming those resources that I need. I really think that I am bored of playing melee right now, which is why I switched to doing this build instead. Don't get me wrong, melee slash build for Necros is still viable and used by many, but right now I personally want to use my guns to farm with Necros. Lastly, I did add two Emerald Archon Shard in my setup that grants five corrosive stack to my Necros. The requirement is only four stacks to give you a maximum of 14 stacks to fully strip the armor of enemies. With Incarnate Torrid's high fire rate, you can inflict 14 stacks of corrosion to enemies and strip their armor, making them very vulnerable with my Nourish setup that also inflicts viral damage. Not to mention that Nourish also gives me constant energy regeneration, and it also works while the Equilibrium mod converts health to energy. Getting back to my Necros build, I added Combat Discipline in the Aura mod since I'm using Arcane Avenger and sometimes Arcane Grace for that health regeneration after my health is damaged with the Combat Discipline mode. Desecrate's health loss is not counted as damage when hit, so that is why I added Combat Discipline in the Aura slot to make these Arcanes work. There's also other Arcane options, especially if you don't need Red Crit in your weapon build since you have a juicy Critical Chance Riven mod. Arcane Blessing paired with Arcane Grace will be great and gives you a massive boost in your health. While you can also mix Arcane Ages and Arcane Blessing depending on the mission you are playing, Arcane Ages will pair well with the Adaptation mod and the Shield Regeneration from your Topaz Archon Shard. Lastly, if you have the Umbra Formal, then go ahead and slap one in this build so you can max the Adaptation mod. And then, of course, I would highly advise that you have at least three Toe Forge version of Topaz Archon Shard. That is the minimum, but if you want to go crazy, then go with 5 Tau Forge Topaz Archon Shard. Honestly, this is the highest investment I have right now for Necros, and it's all worth it. My survivability issue on this Warframe is finally fixed, and I can enjoy him in any missions that I want whenever I don't feel speed running and just want to get extra resources and loot while completing a mission. So, um, that's all about it. I hope that you find this video informative. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.